welcome back to my channel. We're now on to part 7 of this border collie tutorial and we're going to start the ears and the top of the head today. Um, we're just going to see how far we get. This ear is probably going to be a whole tutorial in itself because it's quite large so we may just do this ear and come down the head a little bit more. I hope you're enjoying this series so far. If you haven't subscribed please make sure that you do, it really helps out. And yeah, let's get into it. So I've just got my um, piece of glassine paper and we're going to start as usual with the warm grey one and I'm coming into the ear first and I'm doing this lightest part of the ear so that I can, when we come down the ear, um, it's easier to transition the two areas. So this is just one grey one as a base layer. I'm not worried too much about the graphite lines here, um, I will lighten this one up and um, that one might be a bit too dark. So let's do that now. Let's just put your razor. And then you can bring that base layer right down to where that line was. And this is just going to help smooth out the two for the paper. And I'm just going to this over a bit. Ever so gently move that graphite, it's a bit dark there where I've placed that one. So I hope you're all doing okay. It is absolutely cold here in North Yorkshire. We have snow. My dog is absolutely loving it, of course. I have a Siberian Husky for those who don't know. <laughs> but it is so cold outside. I don't know if we're expecting more snow today, but we've had it for two days so far. We've been out playing in the snow, so we'll see if we get it again or if it's going to start melting. Okay, we have the base layer. And then I'm going to go in with uh, walnut brown. I'm not going to press too hard, but I want this walnut brown um, in this area. This is going to sort of give a nice shaded colour to the grey tones that we're going to go in over the top of. Let's see when we um, come to it. So we're going to come in and add like all the tonal values, all the colours that we can see and then we'll go over the top with all the greys just to mute them all down again and that'll create a nice effect for this ear. I'm also being very mindful of the fur direction again. Um, I know I keep harping on about it in all these tutorials, um, but the fur direction is very important. This is um, how we're going to make it look realistic, is constantly following the um, direction of the fur. Okay, that's the walnut brown. Um, I'm going to get the uh, purple violet again. We've just got a bit of a purplish tone um, along this bottom here. Now again, you're not pressing hard. You don't need to press too hard. Just enough. You can just see that tint of the colour coming through. And we're all there. Okay. Um, I can also see a bit of green. So I've got the olive green yellowish. Um, and just along this bottom part here. A light bit of the olive green. Right. And then I'm going to take the warm grey 5 if I can find it. Uh, yeah, the warm grey five, and I'm going to cover all this bit that we've just filled in. Just paying attention again to the fur direction. Longer strokes, sort of towards the top of this ear here. The fur's getting longer, whereas down here it's shorter. So 
Where the fur is longer, we're using longer pencil strokes, and where the fur is shorter, we're using the shorter pencil strokes just to help us create that uh, difference in fur length. You also taper in your um, pencil strokes, so when you come into the edges, as you um, as you do these strokes, you want to lift the pencil off the page ever so gently, and it'll give you those tapered soft edges. a busy week this week i'm hoping to get uh this part of the tutorial you'll watch on uh wednesday so, and i'm hoping to get another one out on friday so i'm hoping like each week i can get free videos out for you um i do have a busy week again this week um so if i miss an upload day i am very sorry but i'm going to try my best to get free videos a week up um so that we can get this guy finished Right, uh, I'm going to go in with the cold grey, I want the cold grey 6, uh, there we go, cold grey 6, this is along the bottom here, and I'm going to start pressing a little harder, harder pressure, I'm going to start really darkening this here now, and we're using, we're using the polychromos and adding all these colours that we added, um, polychromos are very translucent. So you're going to start to see these colours just coming through the layers and just give a really nice effect. And again, I'm just going to take those edges. So have I got any news for you? Um, I've set up an Etsy shop recently. Um, I just need to really start marketing that now. Um, that's to help sell my greeting cards. So I'll add a link to that below if anybody's interested in purchasing any greeting cards. And then I'm I'm thinking, what what would you like to draw for the next tutorial? Um, do you want to do just like an eye study, or do you want a real time again? long tutorial. I'm wondering whether like a short mini tutorial would be helpful. Because I'm trying to I'm trying to make some of these tutorials like mainly the real time uh, from my own photos so that it's not you're not getting a tutorial that anybody else can do. Like these are photos that I've taken you won't find the, these photos elsewhere. I think that's helpful. Right, I'm going to get the um, long grey six over the top here. You can see now that it's really starting to darken up. Getting some nice fur in on this ear. Um, actually, I'm going to go back in with the one grey five on here and just press it a little bit harder. I'm thinking maybe like a t short tutorial on how to draw dog paws. Um, I think obviously we don't not many people do if you're a pet portrait artist you get asked mainly to draw the headshots um uh, this is the one gray three but if you sometimes you do get a full body request and there's paws and i know not everybody likes drawing paws so maybe a paw tutorial um or we could do like an eye study they're always fun <laughs> 
um, and then I'm going back into with the Payne's Grey along here. Just to create this bluish tone that we can see. You can also use the dark indigo if you wanted it to look a bit more blue toned. Right, before I do any more down here, we're going to get the darker section in. Um, so we need the warm grey one. There's our base layer. I'm also thinking like tutorials, like maybe short time lapses um, while I speak about it on like ear types because um, different breeds have different ear types and the way that you'd approach an ear type would vary from breed to breed. Um, right, so we've got the um, base layer down there. I'm going to go in with the dark indigo. And we're going to get this nice bluish tone coming through. And I'm going to cover the whole of this base layer uh, where we put the warm grey, all of that with this warm, uh, with this dark indigo. But don't press too hard. It's almost like you're just doing a glaze. You just want that hint of that blue. And you're going to... I may go over this with the Payne's grey just to help with this bluish tone but not so it's so blue like the dark indigo i don't know if that makes any sense but like the Payne's gray does have that bluish tone to it but i don't want the dark indigo to be in your face so yeah i'm going um in over the dark indigo with the Payne's gray um so yeah i think an ear tutorial might be helpful um maybe do like a an erect ear um, because this guy's ears are semi erect and full of fur so maybe one that doesn't have as much fur could do like a rose ear like a rip it, whip it has so many different ear types out there um, so yeah that, that's kind of my ideas maybe like paw study, eye studies um, ears obviously eyes because eyes are always fun to draw um, and then every now and then like a, a real time full tutorial um, but yeah let me know what you want to see I'll take any suggestions <laughs> um, I've then got the olive green yellowish because there's a hint of green just along the edge here so again we're just building up these colours that we can see um, I'm going to take the I think I'm going to take you. Uh, the Caput Morton Violet just in between these hairs here there's like a purplish turn now again we're building up the colours we're going to go over this just adding where I can see bits of this purplish okay and then I'm going to get the black and I'm going to go over this so when we're coming in here where we've marked in I'm gonna again be doing those tapering motions so I'm not pressing too hard with the black yet this will probably take a few layers but we want this ear to look soft so I'm bringing the fur in and I'm tapering like we've tapered here at the edges I'm coming down and tapering and Again, making sure I follow the direction of the fur. And I'm just going to... The fur length here is quite short. Now again, if you wanted to just go straight in with black, you could, because it is a dark area. Um, I just like having all these colours um, shining through. I like my 
to be colourful. <laughs> if you haven't worked that out by now. <laughs> And just short strokes again where this block is. And then it's kind of a darker area here. So I'm just going to do that. And then very lightly glaze here. I don't want this bit to be as dark, it's a bit lighter in colour. Okay, um, I'm just going to go oops, over this edge side here with the Payne's Grey. Do I want the Payne's Grey? Maybe the dark, dark sepia, maybe. Dark sepia. Let's use dark sepia. Yeah, dark sepia. You could use the Payne's Grey if you wanted to keep that bluish tone. Um, I'm just going to go in with the dark sepia instead. And I'm starting to apply more layers to get this area nice and dark. So increasing my pressure with each layer and we're going to start getting this section quite nice and dark now. Just get the warm grey free here, this needs to be a bit lighter. And I'm going back in with this black, especially in this corner here. And I'm going to start increasing my pressure now and making it look really dark. May come in, I think, with the um, Payne's Grey. Let's have a look. Let's just get this black in. See, I'm always like thinking ahead. Like once I've applied this layer color, while I'm while I'm applying this layer, sorry, in this color, I'm like looking ahead because you're constantly looking at your reference photo. So I'm constantly planning. Like, okay, this needs maybe a bit more Payne's Grey. And now this needs a bit more of this color. Um, so yeah, I'm going to get the Payne's Grey. Um, this needs to be a bit more like bluish rather than blood, dark black. Again, I'm using quite harsh pressure now. Just keeping those edges. So I'm going to bring that just over the top of this fur, the Payne's Grey, it's going to help soften these edges. It's not so harsh. Okay, and then I'm going to get the Warm Grey 5. By adding those dark tones, we can see where this needs to get darker. Um, I'm just going to go in with the cold grey five. Just doing the top and then get the um, black here. Just actually, let's use the dark sepia down here. 
just going to darken some of this. And some of these hair clumps that you can see. A bit more of. Again, I'm not pressing hard, it's just got like a glaze just to help darken. Um, and I'm going to get the paints grey. Just gently over the top. Um, like so. So we have uh, one ear. So let's start the um, fur on his head. So we're picking up um, our base layer of uh, warm grey one again. And we really need to make sure when we come to doing the fur on this head, it changes direction quite a bit. So we really need to focus on that. Um, so I'm just going to add in along here first, this little section of grey, warm grey one. We'll work on this little corner section, get it all blended, um, and then move up, uh, move along the head. So um, I'm going to come in first of all with the cold grey three, and I'm just along here. I want this a bit more bluish in tone, so we can use the cold greys again, tapering those edges and blending into what we've already got. I'd love to see if you are following along with this tutorial, um, what yours is looking like. So if you on social media, do tag me um, or drop me an email. I'd love to see what you're creating, if these tutorials are any help. Okay, so this is the um, cold grey. I've not gone all the way up. This bit is still warm grey one. This bit here is the... Um, grey. Um, I'm just going to come in with the purple violet just along this edge. It's going to start going a bit purpley here. Remember all these tones are really going to start adding up. Um, and then we're going to take the warm grey warm grey six and I'm going to come down into here where we've already got some colour and then bring it up just to help with the blending. Yeah, and making sure I'm following that fur direction. So this bit is curving here, and then that bit's going to curve round. Not going all the way over. Going over this purple bit there. Grace six. I think um, the next part of this tutorial, we're going to come down and do the fur under his chin. Um, and the white fur because as we start moving across his face I don't want to be then doing it under his chin um, and worrying that we're going to start smudging stuff um, I'm going to get the one grey five and it's going to start curving here And there's a bit of green on this edge, so I'm just going to, with the um, olive green yellowish, lightly apply that. And then I'm going to take the one grey three and just go over where that green is and create some of these stray hairs as well. And that one grey three um, just along here, the um, edge. 
this here using quite harsh pressure and then I'll go back to the warm grey 5 just to help blend in here and come back down Darker. Let's get the um. That's the cold grey six here. Just need to darken it. Uh, okay, that's the warm grey one. Uh, so the warm grey one. Now I'm really focusing on the um, top of this head bit first. The fur goes in the same direction in this top of the head rather than us worrying about the fur direction here so if we do this little bit of fur here get your base layer down with a warm grey one and then I'm just going to go in over the top of that with the uh, warm grey free again blending here this is like where the light is hitting the top of his head it's kind of like an angled fur strokes. Excuse me. My hiccups. <laughs> Have a cup of tea and trying to drink it quietly. You see it's not as annoying on the um, camera. I lose my hiccups though. Right, so we've got that line in. So that's going to be like our um, placement line that we can refer back to. So I'm going to start from um, the top of his eye here. And I'm just following that fur direction so it kind of comes up and over here and then we've got like this purple highlight here which is kind of like a um, another reference point for us so this is um, a base layer going in and just before I finish with that base layer I'm just going to mark in along the top here that purple reference highlight um, I know that there's purple here, this is what I've been following, I've been following that line of purple so I'm just going to add it in while, before we um, finish the base layer. Um, we've then, so that's the purple, it's coming down here and that bit there is quite straight so we can fill that base layer in there. So this is just to help you, when you're doing your base layers you're also getting an idea of the fur direction. Um, now you don't always have to follow the fur direction with your base layer because you are going over the top but I find it really helps because you're looking at your reference photo and you're studying it and you're really going okay that's where the fur is going. Um, so that fur comes up here like that and then here it curves. You see how much that fur changes direction it's coming over his eyes right so we've got that base layer in for this section so I'm gonna not add any more base layer because I don't want to get confused and we're gonna fill in um, this section of his face so I'm going straight in with the warm grey 5 and I'm following the warm grey 5 up here and that kind of comes all the way up to about there and then it comes down here I just need to darken that layer a bit there as well this is the thing I do move about when I see little bits that need smoothing out <laughs> Um, so because we know this is quite a dark area, I've gone straight in with the warm grey 5. I don't need to build it up with the lighter colours. So that's the warm grey five there um, I'm just gonna I've got the warm uh, cold grey six where these darker bays and we're just gonna blend it 
want these darker shades to blend nicely and that's going to start coming darker here Get the purple there. This is just the four basics. Then that does. Okay, I'm going to just take this. Um, well, let's get the dark indigo. And I'm gonna again making sure we fill in that fur direction. This is gonna be quite dark here, coming up into that purple area there. I'm not going over the purple highlights because there's no blue over them. Blend it into that bit there, and then that blue kind of comes. So I'm just all I'm doing is while I'm doing this, I'm looking at the shapes. And it's those shapes that I'm trying to draw in. Whilst also, obviously, um, looking at further directions. So it sounds, I know it sounds really complicated, but look at the shapes. And then as you're building those shapes, you're following the further direction. You will get there in the end. Okay, and I'm going to get the Payne's Grey, go over and blend that bit in nicely. Um, actually, let's just get the Warm Grey 5, just here where we've got this highlight. Well, it's not a highlight, but um, compared to the other it looks like a highlight. Just going to get that Warm Grey 5 base layer. Well, it's not base layer, but... We will be going over it. What worked in there? Right, and then get the Payne's Grey again. I'm just going to start darkening this up. So start also increasing the length of my strokes ever so slightly. The good thing with this Fabriano is it can take so many layers, which is why I really like using it. I like the amount of layers that I can get on the page. It is all paint grey. It's going to be black. But we're going to get those nice blue undertones coming through. Just making sure that everything looks nice and blended. Good way as well of um, when you're doing dog's fur, try and imagine what that fur feels like. So with this guy, we're imagining that his fur is going to be quite soft. They have very dense coats, the Border Collies. Uh, this is Cold Grey 6. Um, just to help blend this warm grey 5. They have very dense coats, especially um, their top coat. Their undercoat is quite soft, but their top coat is dense and fairly textured. And that's the kind of feeling that we want to get to the fur. We want this nice dense look to the fur, but we also want to be able to get that texture coming through. Again, if you're not sure on the um, textures of the dog's coats that you're drawing, um, as I mentioned before, have a look at the breed standards, if you know what breed of dog you're drawing. Um, they tell you su such good information. Or even the, the websites, breed club websites, you'll find some really nice information. Or even ask your client, like, can you just give me a brief description of like how you'd say the dog's fur feels like. Right, this is just the warm grey six, just to help blend here. Just going to get the dark sepia in the middle here. Just very lightly, don't press too hard. Just want to help get this a little bit darker. Not 
not too dark just a little bit right and then i'm going to get the black and this black is going to come up here i'm just marking in where i can see the really dark black shades and it's not covering all of this section of the paint's gray so i'll be able to come back over and darken there but this is dark here and again making sure we follow the fur direction <laughs> gonna keep repeating that you'll be sick of me saying it This is dark. I'm just gonna blend that. In areas that just need to be a little bit darker with this black. And again, you could have gone straight in with the black, but I just like how. As we started, we've always had this bluish tone going on. So we're just keeping that nice blue tone in the whole piece, underneath the black. Right, I'm gonna get the, um, actually I'm gonna get the warm, I want the warm gray six. Uh, warm gray six, just where I've not gone over with that black. Again, going over everything, just to help with the blending. Fairly harder pressure and your pencil strokes are still reflecting the length of your fur. And then I'm just going to bring that one grey six here. It's really all starting to come together nicely now. Um, I'm just going to get the Cold Grey 6 just to help blend here. It's not quite as smooth a blend as I would like. Okay, right. Warm Grey 5 along here. Again, and that's going to blend into that Warm Grey 3. But the more that you start adding these dark tones, the more you can just start darkening up little areas that you think need to be darkened. And remember, you can make this piece your own. It doesn't have to be exact to mine. Add the colours you see. You might see more colours than I do. Actually, I'm just going to take the cold grey free along here. Okay, and then I've got the purple violet. And I'm going to do that over the black. And then where I can see that purple. I'm going to get the cold grey 6 coming out and then blending again into that purple. Okay, let's um, keep going. Back to the base layer. So you can see how it's just a lot of back and forth between the colours building up those layers to as dark as you need to following the fur direction all the time and it does take time i do find black fur does take time to build up especially to the color that you want it to look like especially if you like me and you like to use lots and lots of colors which is why i'm kind of worried that this tutorial might be quite a long one because um, we're already what, part seven um but we'll see we'll see how much we can get done because we'll do some of the white fur next week or next week next <laughs> um yeah we'll just see how much we can get done may end up doing some really some longer videos maybe try not to make them more than an hour 
just for ease like if you want to just spend an hour a day having a go I find that an hour is a nice block of time I have days where like you just don't you struggle in maybe with motivation and I find just sitting down for an hour and working on a piece for an hour is all that sometimes you need to do definitely helps me anyway right so I've got just a straight line up here um this is where we're starting to join the, the other ear so we'll get this section in first so again we're going to go in with the warm grey five and it is quite dark along the top of this head bit here so again we've got some loose tapered hairs which I will refine later but just as a general idea and this is Again, we're making sure curving over this part of the foot head. And then I'm going to bring this colour all across this base layer. And then we can add some of the other colours that we can see afterwards. I think this has turned out to be quite a long tutorial because I've drawn this quite large. I think if I'd have drawn it a bit smaller, this is larger than A4. Um, so if I'd have drawn him a bit smaller, probably would have been a bit quicker. <laughs> but I just found a scrap piece of uh, paper that I wasn't using for commissions. I was like, that, that size will do. <laughs> but I know for next time uh, we'll draw draw smaller. Again, you might have drawn your smaller size anyway. Um, or maybe you've gone larger. This would look very nice actually, quite quite a large drawing. This would look awesome. Right, we're getting there now. Again, I'm pencil strokes are reflecting the fur length. And this will all blend nicely together. At least that's the goal. <laughs> okay, um, right, I am going to get the darkened again. And again, I'm going to apply it across here blend. so again I'm, all I'm doing is when I'm looking at my reference photo I'm looking at the tones I can see what colours can I see underneath this fur and that's what I'm applying sorry just get a drink I can definitely see this blue tone on this side of his face. I'm probably going to be using the Payne's Green Dark Indigo quite a bit as we come over this side of his head. Okay, I'm then gonna get my. I am getting my. What am I on? Payne's grey. Um, do I want Payne's grey? So I'm trying to work out the best way for us to do this. But yeah, I'm gonna get the Payne's grey along the top here. Blend into that bit.
I'm just going to dark indigo over the top very lightly with this dark indigo and then the warm grey five to blend these Warm grey three, and I'm using the warm grey three just to help blend. Right, so okay, yeah, I'm not getting happy with this. Right, I've got the paints grey, and I'm going to go over the whole of this area that we've got drawn out with this paints grey, not pressing too hard. Slowly going to build it up because this is quite a dark area. So I see now how we're starting to get nice separation in these clumps as well, which is fine. Down his eye here. I really like when we start getting this connection between his eye and the fur. It really sets the eye in place. Makes it look more realistic. Really starting to see his character come through as well. Okay, that's the paint's grey. I'm then going to take the black and I'm going to add in this darker shadow that I can see. So that's the pink there, so that's coming across here, so that's black. I'm not pressing too hard yet. Really don't need to, we've built up enough layers that it's going to look quite dark anyway. I'm trying to think what dog breed I could possibly do next. I've got lots of husky photos, so maybe we'll do a husky tutorial. Or is there particular colours of dogs that you struggle with? Maybe I can see what photos I've got. Um, like I say, I want to try and just use my photos. I want to make them, I want to make these tutorials more exclusive for everybody. Like, they're not just photos that you can pick up of Pixabay and anybody can use. Like, these photos you've found from me. This is the black still. Um, so we've come in, as it comes, this black section comes from that sort of the middle of this eye here and curves around. So this bit in a bit needs to be darker. So by using like the eye and the ears as points of reference, um, you'll be able to find just like where these markings need to go. They're not markings, shadows of the fur, but everything helps you place in um, motion where you need things to go. And remember, this is really curving. So this bit is curving up and over his head, whereas this bit is curving round the side of his head. Have to get this to look more blended than it does. Quite a harsh line there at the moment.
Right, so that's that. I'm just going to darken the edge. It's a little bit, a little bit darker. Do you see any areas that you need to darken in your own piece? Go for it. While you're going along, it's easier to do as you go along, I find. Right. Perhaps it's the... Oh, it comes there. Right, I'm going to get the um, Payne's Grey and I'm just going to go over the top of this black and help blend these colours. So we want a smooth transition between like the darks and the light. Don't want a harsh line. So I'm using the Payne's Grey to help with the blend in here. Yeah, it just gives a nice smooth blend. Just ties everything to look like it's in one big section. And again, I'm just going to use this Payne's Grey. Slightly. Actually, I'm going to get the One Grey Six. Um, if I can find what I've done with it. One Grey Six. I'm going to use the warm grey six um, in this area now. Just to help, we've used quite a lot of the blues, so I just want to knock back that blue a little bit. Get the cold grey six here. Um, and then the one grey five just on the top of this head again it's all about for me it's all about getting this like smooth transition between all the colors i want this fur to look really soft don't want any harsh harsh lines um, especially in the fur one grey three just again Along here. Right, then the Payne's Grey just over the top again. It's not quite black this area, but it's still quite dark, so we're just going to use all the warm greys and cold greys to help build it up. Also, I'm not probably not going to fully finish like rendering this area because you can see there's a lot of fur lines. Um, but we're not going to come down this here yet. We're probably going to start coming down here. Um, but we want this to look just like we're getting the start of the fur marked in. So once we've done this paint's grey layer, we'll start coming down the head. And I'm just going to get the warm grey five. It's a bit lighter, sort of here. Um, warm grey six again. Remember, I'm not pressing hard, very light layers. Along here. Right, 
I'm going to leave this section where that is because I want to blend this bit into the other fur markings. So we're just going to start coming down his face here. So I've got my um, warm grey, warm grey warm. And we do have a section of his, like his cheek here. So we're going to get that fur in first. So I'm just going to get my warm grey one here. And that fur is coming over here. So we're following that line here. So we're coming down. Like so it's really rounding. Because he's got his mouth open. So this is like the part where having that little bit of knowledge of anatomy helps. So his mouth is open. So it's pushing his fur back. Because of the muscles and everything underneath his... Um, Underneath the fur. So it's really important that you make sure when you, especially when a dog's mouth is open, that you're really focusing on all the shapes that you can see. So I'm just going to get this. So this is um, still the warm grey one as a base layer. I've not really used the cold, you could use the cold grey one, especially as we've used a lot of the colder colours. Um, I just, I like I like the effect that we're getting with the um, warm grey one as the base layer. Right, so I'm just gonna come about here with that base layer. I'm then going to come in with um the walnut brown just sort of down here again i'm really making sure i'm following this fur direction very lightly with this one up brown one there and there's not much of it but i just want this like brownish tone to come through Um, I'm then going to get the dark indigo and it's coming down this eye here and again I'm constantly I know I've gone quiet I'm Constantly looking back at this reference photo because the fur is really changing directions here. Really need to keep an eye on this fur direction. So it's really curving around here. Okay, and then the paint's grey. Just going to sharpen this paint's grey. Um, I've got the paint's grey, just following that. Following this line of fur. Yeah, we're going to make sure everything blends nice and smoothly. The more layers we add, we want it all to blend nicely. Right, I'm just going to get the Warm Grey 5. So I'm kind of flipping between Warm Grey 5, 6, um, the Payne's Grey, Cold Grey 6 and Dark Indigo for this fur now. Um, and I'm just adding this warm grey five all along here. And again, blending where we've already applied colour, going over the top and blending into this new application. And that's a line there. It's really starting to come together now as this piece is looking pretty good. This is 
one three five four along where we've got that base layer applied and then I'm just going to get the dark sepia because we can see some fur lines so what I'm going to do is with a dark sepia I'm just going to map in some of these darker lines that we can see so there's one there there's one sort of here and then obviously this is where it's starting to curve around so this is going to be a bit darker so that comes down here so all you're doing is again shapes and it doesn't matter if these are all in the wrong place having that resemblance of them being there is still going to add to the realism they don't have to be exact to the reference photo um, mine definitely aren't they're just there to show that there is clumps of fur um, and then I'm going back in with the dark uh, with the Payne's grey sorry and we're going to start darkening this up so yeah we just want the resemblance that the fur is in clumps because every photo this fur is going to look very different So I'm just adding this Payne's Grey. See some purple tones as well, so I'm going to have to go in with a few purpley tones. My first, my um, pencil lines are quite long as well. They're getting, the fur is getting quite longer here. And I know that the fur here is going to be quite smooth looking, so we really, really need to get everything really nicely blended on this section of his face. Um, I'm then going to get the cold grey six. I'm not no. I'm going to get the purple violet, where I can see these purple tones, sort of along here. Just going to add them in now. This is purple violet along here, sort of here, and I'm going to get the dark indigo because it's a bit more bluish toned here. Okay, I'm then going to get the cold grey six. Gonna go again over everything. And then I'm coming in again with the Payne's Grey and I'm really going to start darkening up some of these dark lines that I can see. So we've got the fur lines back in. Just want to start really adding this contrast. And we're making sure it all blends nice and smoothly. Now if you wanted to go straight ahead and just really darken it up straight away, you can do. I, I again, like I say, I really like building up these layers. It helps me visualise everything and I can help get smooth, nice smooth layers, which I really like in my work. And then the paint's grey, just a bit lighter along here. Um, then the warm grey six just down here okay and then we get the black i'm just gonna 
Arkin. Here. Along here. And this bit here has come back. Blends out. And then just get the one grey six. Just to help here with this blending. Like so. Right. Um, let's get the one grey one again. Just going to blend this little bit fur in and then we will leave the tutorial um, here. So I'm going along this line where there was a whisker. And it's going to co connect here with that fur. Like so. So this is all the base lay again, following the fur direction. Remembering that his mouth's open, so we've got all the muscles moving underneath his fur. And that's what we need to try and capture. Okay, I'm then going to get the dark indigo. And I'm just following the direction of the fur. Just move this piece of paper. There we go. Down here, yep. look at that. So that's the um, dark indigo there. I'm going to get the cold grey. Four I've got here. I don't want this section to be as blue as the dark indigo, so this is called grey four. A little bit lighter. Just blend it a little bit into that dark indigo there. So, and I'm going to take the Payne's Grey over the whole area. Again, just making sure the fur direction is being followed. And that's coming down here as well. Okay, and then I'm going to get the black. Because this section is quite dark, so I'm going to go over. Make sure it all blends nicely. Now I have left a gap here. We need to blend the white and the black fur in. Um, I may do that the next next time round. Um, we'll see. See how much we get done. So this has gone on for quite a while now, this tutorial. <laughs> we'll see, we may, may blend it in just before we finish. I'm using quite hard pressure here because it is dark. And then you're going to sort of lighten your pressure as you come further away from this darker area. Just going over this section a few times, make it nice and dark. And I'm going to go in with the one by five.
And then the paint's grey. Again, just making sure I'm overlapping these colours that are already laid down because that's going to help with the um, effect of looking smooth and blended. Don't want really don't want any harsh lines. Um, I'm just going to get the cold grey for just a bit harder pressure just to help with the blend here. And then the black again just make sure everything's blended, darkening up any of those areas that I need to darken. Yeah. Paint's grey. He's starting to really get his face. Um, so I'm just going to get the cold grey warm. I'm just blend this white fur into this black bit. So that's the cold grey warm. Um, I'm then going to get the warm grey six. Uh, really sharp. You want this warm grey six to be nice and sharp. Um, I'm then going to just again. Some of these looser hairs come in. Look. So I'm going over that black and then into the white muzzle. Again, this doesn't have to be 100% accurate to the reference photo. Just taken quite far away was this reference photo, so we're just going to give that effect. I'm just going back in with a black, just over some of those lines, just to help taper it, make it look blended and soft. So we've got the whisker line there, just blend those harsh lines out. Um, this is the Payne's Grey, I'm just going over the Cold Grey 4, and just over this bit here as well. Okay, um, so if we move the paper, you can see we've done quite a lot of him today. We've got his ear in and we're starting to come down his face with the fur. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm really happy with how he's turning out. He's looking really good. Uh, next time we're going to come down here. We're going to do the fur, try and get this fur section in. So he, under his mouth and this white bit of fur. And then the rest of it is about um, getting this black fur done, which will take a little bit of time. But we're, we're getting there. We are getting there. I'm hoping maybe another four or five tutorials and he will be done. Um, so thank you if you've watched for this whole tutorial. Um, do let me know what you want to see in the future tutorial wise and I will see you all next time. Bye everybody.